Hello and welcome back to Matt Hayes Tatlin Blog and to another Transfer Talk live stream. Uh, quite a bit to get through today, some updates on the futures of Milan, Skriniar, uh, Arcadius Milik, Vout Veghorst and a, a few Spurs players as well who could potentially be on the way out of the club. Uh, welcome along to a few of you down the stream, Ryan uh, in very early for this one. Um, today we're going to be talking about all those players and of course taking your questions as always, a few big fixtures coming up for Spurs. Uh, of course, a, a bit of uncertainty surrounding our Carabao Cup future after last night's game against Leighton Orient was called off, so we'll be talking about that as well. Uh, but before I get into all that, if you are new to the channel and you do want more transfer videos, uh, transfer live streams, match previews, reviews and general Tottenham analysis videos, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and click the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload or go live. Uh, welcome Van Shadar and Stephen Flynn as well uh, to the stream. So just to recap the, the news that we got this morning, and it is to do with uh, this man, Milan Skriniar. And Fabrizio Romano actually uh, reported late last night that Tottenham had entered negotiations, preliminary talks with Inter Milan over the transfer of Milan Skriniar. Now, we know early on in this transfer window that there was the potential for a move uh, for Milan Skriniar to potentially join Tottenham. Uh, Charlie THFC, welcome to the stream as well. Uh, Inter Milan had actually offered Milan Skriniar in a swap deal for Spurs in their pursuit of Tongi and Dambele. Uh, I know a lot of Spurs fans slightly concerned that this uh, the re this this news being reignited uh, could potentially be a, a bad thing for the future of Tongi and Dombele. However, Fabrizio Romano has confirmed there is no chance of Ndombele being part of this deal. And if Spurs are to sign Milan Skriniar, it will be uh, a straight up cash deal. And Dombele will not be involved with that. Uh, and Atnarsh Luke as well, welcome to the stream. Uh, so good news for us on that front that we will not be seeing Ndombele going the other way. Uh, with regards to Skriniar himself, as you can see there, um, he's a 25-year-old Slovakian centre-back who, who joined Inter Milan in 2015 and since then has gone on to make 105 Serie A appearances, I think registering four goals in that period, but of course not an important stat for a centre-back. He has 33 senior caps for Slovakia and is widely regarded as one of the, one of the top centre-backs in, in, in Italy. You know, we obviously have players like Matthias De Ligt who have come across there in recent times, uh, but in the past Chiellini, Benucci, uh, a, a number of, of centre-backs who are... Uh, Stine is better than him, but he is definitely top 5, top 10 centre-backs over in Italy. Uh, it has been reported in, in, Inter Milan are valuing him at about €60 million, Euro, which is the equivalent of about £55 million, pounds, which I think we can say safely it's not within Tottenham's price range at all. I think there's going to have to be a big compromise there if we can complete a move for Milan Skriniar. Uh, but at the moment, Inter Milan are, are, are valuing him at about €60 million, Euro, but I'm sure they will be open to, to negotiate there. Uh, Tottenham, according to a number of reports, have offered £35 million pounds today. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that's true because based on the, the particular sources that have said this, they're not the most reliable and I think that is a, a bit lower than what we should be expecting to pay for him. But uh, just bringing, it to, bringing the news to you, some reports have suggested we have offered uh, £35 million pounds for him. Uh, as you can see, extremely talented with the ball. One of his, one of his key uh, attributes as a defender is his, is his ability to play football. Uh, and of course a top defender too, the, the Italians, people who play in Italy always are. So he's very, very good both in possession and out of possession in, in that defensive role. And that's something we'll see quite a bit uh, in terms of the centre-backs we're going to be looking at that Tottenham could potentially be signing. They're all very good uh, on the ball. And I think in that regard could be a potential replacement for Eric Dyer, who I think is, is only in, in our centre-back position at the moment due to his, uh, his abilities on the ball. Uh, Giovanni, Caleb, Toxic, Bradley, uh, welcome along to the stream as well. Ronnie too. Um, so yeah, look... Apparently, Inter Milan have also uh, identified their replacement for uh, for for Milan Skriniar, who is Nikola Milenkovic, a centre back for Fiorentina. So they're already potentially looking to uh, bring in a replacement for him, which is only encouraging with regards to whether or not they they will be letting him go. Uh, I think I I really really do think he is an outstanding centre back signing for us. I think he in terms of the targets that we that we have identified this summer and and in recent years, I think he is certainly the best. Um, I've been speaking a lot in the last week uh, about this centre back uh, target. Ruben Diaz has been a player who I've said is from who we're looking at is the best choice for us to bring in. We are Tottenham TV on the channel uh, recently as well, and they said the same thing. Ruben Diaz is the best centre back choice, but I think with Milan Skriniar now in the mix, I would 100% prefer to see him come in uh, than Ruben Diaz. And I think in terms of uh, how realistic it is. Uh, we'll go on to Ruben Diaz in a sec, but he has a release clause of €100 million Euro in his contract. And although Benfica are open to negotiations with him, I think Skriniar is more realistic and certainly a better option. And given the fact that Inter Milan were keen to offer him for Tongi and Dombele, I think that says uh, he is open to a move to Spurs because I don't see why Inter would, would make that bid without, of course, first passing it by the player. So I really, really do think this is a move that could happen. Um, again, in terms of valuations, both clubs are very far off at the moment, but... 
uh, this this is a deal that I do think could be completed. Um, I wouldn't say it's likely. I wouldn't say I wouldn't sit here and say I think it's going to happen. But there there's of course uh, about a week and a half left in the transfer window. Uh, I think this is one that we could see a few developments on, and it's one that I would love to see love to see happen. Now uh, our other centre back target is of course Ruben Diaz. Uh, Fabrizio Romano keen to point out he is still an option for Spurs. We haven't uh, turned our attentions away from him just yet. Um, he is a 23-year-old centre-back for Benfica. I think this has been cut off there um, at the end. We'll try to bring that back in. Uh, he's a 23-year-old centre-back for Benfica. Uh, he's made 89 appearances for them. I think he played with their their uh, academy team before he moved up to their senior team. He scored eight goals in those appearances. Uh, and he has 19 senior caps for Portugal as well. And this is what I was saying about that release clause. A €100 million Euro release clause in his contract. But, as we've been saying in recent weeks, Benfica could be forced to sell him. Uh, for financial reasons, due to the impact of lockdown, that uh, you know the impact it has had on every single club. Of course, it's hit Benfica hard as well. And they've missed out on Champions League football uh, for this season, which isn't something that happens them very often. So the the financial impact of that as well could force their hand in a move and potentially see Ruben Diaz on his way out of Benfica this summer. He's represented by a long term associate of Jose Mourinho and Jorge Mendes. Uh, Mourinho and Mendes involved in a number of deals in the past. And that, that could be a very good advantage for us in our pursuit of him. And as I was saying, a little trend here, uh, good ball playing centre-back. It's all of the centre-backs we've seen, Kim Min-Jae as well for Beijing Guan, who we're not going to talk about too much today. But uh, they're, they're players who can who are good in possession and kind of shows where Mourinho was trying to bring this team, that he's he wants us to be a possession team. It's not going to be his uh, typical or his maybe stereotypical team of uh, you know, 10 men behind the ball and hoping for the best in that regard. He is trying to bring in ball-playing centre-backs and I think that's very good and it's very positive in terms of what we could be, what kind of team we could be becoming um, in the coming weeks. Um, Espen Anderson asking, Skriniar and a cheap forward or Milik and a cheap centre-back? Um, I would have to say I'd have to say Skriniar and a, and a cheap uh, cheap forward because... I think first of all we do need to improve our first team. You know, as much as we do want squad depth, we want to bring in people like uh, you know backup strikers. If you want to bring in uh, more midfielders, even uh, second choice fullbacks, I think it is important to have that squad depth. But we need to improve our first team. We need our first eleven to be the best it can be before we go on to that. I think centre back is a position that does need to be improved. If Toby Alderweireld and Eric Dyer are going to be our number one options, I'd much prefer to see that be Alderweireld and Skriniar or Alderweireld and Diaz. And I think it it, it will be better to bring in an expensive centre back and a cheap striker but um, it looks as though we could be getting in a good, a good centre back and a good striker but I think there will have to be uh, departures from the club uh, in the coming weeks if that is going to happen uh, Charlie saying uh, R- Romano saying on his podcast Spurs are trying to offer loan with obligation to buy um, I'm not sure now if that's with uh, Scrinia or Diaz if you wouldn't mind just popping in there uh, which one that is about Giovanni saying, can't we offer a 35 million loan with an obligation to buy after one year? And that is something, of course, Tottenham have been been very keen to do in recent years uh, with Jetson Fernandez, Giovanni Lo Celso. Uh, we made similar offers for Andrea Bellotti. Um, I think it, it is, of course, a possibility and it could be something for Tottenham that would kind of break up the, the cost of the deal because if we're going to be getting a loan with an obligation to buy, I think some of that money will be paid up front in a loan fee, which will, of course, take it off the, the overall price uh, a year later. Um, Josh was saying if we can get a centre back uh, we can challenge for the title this season and I, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say we can challenge for the title I mean I'm, I'm an optim- optimistic fan but I'm also realistic I think you know we are improving our team quite a bit and I think bringing in the players that we have already brought in and then uh, including a, a centre back and, and a striker in that I do think um, we will be we probably would be one of the favourites for a top four but we're still so far behind Liverpool and City and I do think we are still behind Chelsea so I think talk of a title just yet is premature but uh, in, in two, three, four years time if we do keep this sort of recruitment if we do keep Jose Mourinho and if things do work out for him there's nothing to say that we, we won't be challenging for the title then but I think a lot of things need to go our way in the meantime uh, for us to um, to get to that level uh, now before I do continue as you can see up there at the top my subscriber goal for this transfer window is 3000 and we're on course to absolutely smash that uh, so if you are new to the channel please go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button down below um, it'll help me out a lot and I'm hoping we can bring a build a massive community here for the season ahead um, so again if you are new to the channel make sure to go down and, and smash that subscribe button um, Charlie saying that is for, for Skriniar so in terms of a uh, the loan uh, Spurs are trying to offer loan with obligation to buy so according to Fabrizio Romano thank, Fabrizio Romano, thank you Charlie for that one Tottenham are looking to offer a loan with an obligation to buy for Milan Skriniar uh, which look could I think does make this deal a bit more likely, but I think there will still need to be a lot of negotiation, a lot of uh, compromise going on there uh, if that one is to go ahead. 
uh, Kieran saying Skriniar is absolutely world class. Definitely get him, and I do agree. He's a sensational defender, and I think is is way above Liquid Snake. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, I think Skriniar is is way above the the target and the, the level of player we have been looking at in recent years in in every position. To be honest, I know Gareth Bale a bit of an exception this year, but he's an outstanding player. He's world class, as you say. Um, I think it would be a fantastic signing for us to get in. Uh, Liquid Snake saying Skriniar deal. How do you think it will be financed? Uh, my guess, Danny Rose plus uh, lifetime access to the Dare Skywalk for Marathi and Conte. Um, I think it will be uh, in terms of departures. You know, Danny Rose looking likely to leave. I don't think he will be going to Genoa, but I think there'll be a number of teams on the continent very keen to bring him in. Uh, Serge Aurier, I think, could be on his way out as well. Spartak Moscow are at the moment confident they can complete a deal for him. However, Sky are reporting that actually Serge Aurier will only move to uh, a top five, a, a team in the top five European leagues. Are of course England. Uh, Spain, France, Germany and Italy so perhaps that move to Spartak Moscow not as likely as it seemed a couple of days ago uh, I think Gazaniga as well could be on his way out uh, we haven't even seen him make the bench this season with uh, of course Larry starting and Joe Hart being on the bench I think the, the Deli Alley rumour mill I think is going to continue but we heard today from Jose Mourinho that he is confident he'll be staying so I wouldn't be too I wouldn't be too I wouldn't be expecting to see a Deli Alley departure this summer but I do think we will have um, see a number of players leaving. I think Juan Foyt also rumored to be of interest to Fulham, so I think that is how those deals will be uh, will be financed. Ratty Star Steve, welcome along to the stream, saying we have more problems conceding goals than we do scoring them. A decent centre back is far more important, of course. But with regards to the question of would we like a cheap centre back, an expensive striker, or vice versa, and I do agree, conceding goals has been a big problem for us. Our defence has been very very leaky in recent years, so uh, an expensive centre back definitely a, a, a more important option for us at the moment. Toxic saying uh, Diaz, Skriniar and Harris Seferovic to sign for us to push for the league. I think we will, we should be looking for uh, a better level striker than Harris Seferovic. I know Kieran there as well saying I don't think Seferovic is coming. Um, I would like to see us bring in a better striker than him but at the moment in terms of Diaz and Skriniar it, it is only going to be one of those as much as we would like to see two of them coming in. Um, it will only be one of those. Um, Steve saying going to be difficult to tempt players from Italy with their new tax break for footballers. Poor F saying any news on Kim Min Jae? Um, we're going to be in the same situation with Kim Min Jae as we were last week. Uh, I know KBS and South Korea were reporting that they were expecting Tottenham to come in with with a final offer for Kim Min Jae, uh, which of course we haven't yet seen uh, unless these reports aren't coming out that, that the bid has been made. Um, so I think that that Kim Min Jae uh, move has gone has gone a co gone kind of cold again. I'm not sure if we will see any any developments on that one unless these deals for Skriniar and Ruben Diaz don't come to fruition. I'd say Kim and Jay is more of a backup option for us at the moment, which in terms of backup options, he's a fantastic, fantastic one to have. Um, a very, very talented footballer. Uh, but I think, you know, unsurprisingly, Skriniar and, and Ruben Diaz are definitely uh, higher up on our, on our list of priorities, as they should be. Um, Kieran saying Diaz, problem about him, is Benfica 170 million and his release clause is around 100 million, which is too much for just a centre-back. Um, I'm not sure how much they're asking for. Uh, I don't know where you've heard that they're asking for 70 million, which of course they could be. Uh, but I haven't seen anything about that. I think they will be open to negotiation. And if their current financial situation is uh, forcing them to sell, I think they will have to sell him for a lot less than, than they would be hoping to get for him. Um, Giovanni saying, I hate Joe Hart on the bench. Why not Gazaniga? Paul saying, exciting times for Spurs regarding the right-back situation. Shouldn't we keep Serge as backup? We'll be leaving ourselves short again. And I do agree. I think it would be best It would be best to, to have a second-choice right-back there. You know, We've already offloaded Kyle Walker-Peters this window. As I said, Juan Foyth attracting interest from, from Fulham. Uh, Serge Aurier now potentially leaving as well. I think the only other option we have in that team, or the only two options maybe, are Jaffa Tanganga and Jetson Fernandez, who have played in right-back in the past, but neither of them, neither of them are right-backs. You know, Jetson, a midfielder, who just has been kind of tested in that role, and Tanganga, a centre-back, who, who perhaps will be better in, in a right centre-back in a three. Um, but he has he I think he sh he showed mainly in his performance against Liverpool last year when he when he did very well with Mane that he does have the potential to play in that right back position. But for now, I think we do need a better option there. And again, talking with the We Are Tottenham TV lads in the last couple of days, they're of the same mindset. Uh, we need options at the moment. And Serge Aurier, well, I don't think he would be the biggest loss to us. I think you know it's better to have just Matt Doherty than it is to have just Serge Aurier. Um, I think options will be better for us. But at the moment, it's looking likely that that Serge Aurier could be leaving Tottenham this summer. Uh, Kieran saying why can't we get two centre backs, Skriniar and Kim Min Jae? Um, I I don't know. Kim Min Jae will be uh, of course a lot cheaper than than Milan Skriniar and Ruben Diaz. So per perhaps there there is the option there. Um, if Reno does want two centre backs to get one of Skriniar and Diaz and maybe Kim Min Jae, but as I said, I do think that Kim Min Jae thing has gone stale right now. I I don't think we'll see much with that. 
Uh, I think if we were going to see it, it would have happened by now, unless, of course, he is, he's a backup option. So I'm not sure he will be um, coming in along with one of Skriniar or Diaz just yet. Um, Joshua saying, hi, Matt, perfect end to the window will be Skriniar and... I, I'm going to say Milik uh, combining kind of... Uh, realistic and uh, optimistic I suppose I think they would be two very very good deals I don't think we're going to see much more business than that but we do know we we do we have been told we are going to see a center back and a striker coming in this window um so just to revisit this um Arcadius Milik news uh reports last night from Fabrizio Romano that uh Milik's move to Roma fell through and he had been offered to Tottenham at a cut price you know as you see there the asking price from from Napoli reduced from 50 million euro to 35 million euro that was according to Sky Italia a couple of weeks ago whoever Napoli since agreed a deal but Roma for the player believed to be in the region of 25 million euro uh, that has now fallen through it seems as though Milik decided against moving to Rome and last night Napoli offered him to Tottenham in an, in an attempt to get him off their books because their uh, his his contract is up in a year so they want to get him off they don't want to run the risk of losing him for free in six months time um so yeah I think it was it was Alistair Gold maybe I think it was Alistair Gold reporting today that uh, Tottenham's interest in Arcadius Milik has actually cooled, so I don't know. I don't know where we stand on that one. You know, Alistair Gold very, very good when it comes to Tottenham news, but Fabrizio Romano extremely good when it comes to Italian uh, Italian transfer news. So a, a bit of a a bit of a contradiction there, and it's tough to know which one to which one to kind of believe, which one to to lean towards. But I'm sure we'll see um, quite a bit on that in again in the coming weeks. Um, now a bit of breaking news. Uh, let's get up this this graphic. It's, you know, I have it made. I might as well. Might as well use it. Um, a bit of breaking news in the last 15 or so minutes coming from Alistair Gold. And Alistair Gold is claiming that Tottenham have made Ryan Sessegnon available for loan. So this, not one, not a particularly surprising one, but it's not one that we were expecting to uh, to develop this early on in the window. Um, so getting ready this next graphic here. Uh, it's, look, we brought in two players, uh, two very good players, two first team players who... Um, play in the two positions that Ryan Sessegnon does play in, of course, uh, Regalon and left-back, and Bale in that attacking midfield role. Um, I I suppose this it, it, this was something maybe we should have been expecting. I know a lot of fans were expecting this. Um, Ryan Sessegnon hasn't had much first-team action, and with these signings may, being made now as well, um, I think it is, it, maybe it was inevitable, but uh, Alistair Gold reporting tonight that Ryan Sessegnon has been made available for loan. Um, now, just to revise a bit of this... Uh, the Deli Alley move. Now, as we know, we are talking to be running yesterday, and we were discussing this uh, potential for Jesse Lingard to be signed as a replacement for Deli Alley, and it's it's not something that a lot of to Tottenham fans want to happen, but it, it's also not one that a lot of Tottenham fans expect to happen. And I'm kind of in that boat as well. I at first I I didn't believe it at all. But they made Fabrizio Romano kind of joining in uh, with with these reports that Tottenham had identified Lingard as a replacement for Ali. Uh, Jose Marino said today he doesn't expect Eli Ali to leave Tottenham this transfer window. I think Harry Winks said something of, of a similar ilk that they, they they do expect him to be at Spurs beyond beyond the fifth of October. Um, so a quick look at what uh, Jose Mourinho had to say. Uh, this is on the the Sky Sports Transfer Center blog. Uh, Jose Mourinho has just been speaking to the media and he's convinced Deli Ali will be a Tottenham player by the end of the transfer window. The attacking midfielder has been left out of both of the last two Spurs matchday squads and has been linked with a move to Paris Saint Germain. When asked if he'll be at Tottenham come the close of business on October 5th, Mourinho said, I believe, I can even say that I'm convinced that he will be. Mourinho also revealed he tried to sign Gareth Bale at Real Madrid and Manchester United and wants him to stay uh, more than a year. Hopefully at the end of the season we are all happy and he can stay with us. So Mourinho not beating around the bush with that one. Uh, a number of things today suggesting that Gareth Bale will be at Tottenham for more than a year, but with regards to Deli Ali, he's saying he is convinced that Ali will be at Tottenham beyond the window. Um, also kind of talking about who's responsible, I suppose, for, for Deli Alli's drop in form. And he's put the, the entire blame on the player saying, you know, it's it's 99% down to the player and 1% down to the manager. So, look, perhaps there's a bit of friction there between the two of them for him to for him to come out and say that publicly. But it is good news that uh, he is convinced Deli Alli will be at the club beyond the transfer window. Uh, now, Cave Salakal talking on the Sky Sports transfer show tonight. He, uh, with regards to Jose Mourinho's press conference, he said it was him saying to Deli Ali, "You're not going anywhere, but you have to prove to me you are good enough to be in my first team." 
Nobody can take anything for granted at a club as big as Spurs. And he's saying to Deli Ali, convince me on the training ground that you have to be back in the first team. Jose has got a bit of an old school attitude when it comes to man management and how he manages his players, trying to get the best out of them. And was kind of saying there's been a media storm because he's left somebody out. It's part and parcel of football. So that was that was one uh, one outlook on the on the situation at the moment. Uh, Dermesh Sheth had certainly had a very different uh, opinion on it. He said, one thing I would say about the Deli Ali situation, and you can relate it to a lot of transfers, is that it would never be in Tottenham's interest to say publicly that they will be willing to release him. All that would do is drive the transfer fee down if it was meant to be a perm- or if it was a perm- to be a permanent deal. They have to maintain a public stance that Deli Ali is going nowhere, and if privately they are considering any kind of sale publicly, other clubs will know they want to keep him. That's the intimation they would have made. Hence, this keeps his price at a certain level. It will be in Tottenham's interest to say otherwise. Let's see where Deli Ali, Deli Ali is come January if he continues to be left out of squads. To be a part of England squad at next summer's European Championships, he will need to be playing regular first-team football. So that definitely on the mind of Deli Ali trying to get into that Euro squad. Um, we know he was left out of England's most recent squad. And I think maybe that is where this talk of a loan is coming from. Tottenham, I, I can't imagine, will be in any sort of mindset to, to let him go on a permanent deal. But... If he's not in Jose Mourinho's immediate plans, the player could be pushing for a loan move to try get back out in the pitch, try find his best form, and and and, and get back into that into that England squad because a player of his quality should never be missing out on major tournaments like that. And I think if he continues the way he's going, he certainly runs the risk of doing just that. And you know, I think we all want to see him doing well in, in our team, of course, but we all want to see him in in that England squad as well. It's always nice to see Spurs players players doing well for their national team. But we'll have to wait and see how that goes. We'll have to wait and see how this develops across the transfer window. As we say, two very different opinions on, on Sky Sports there from Darmes Shet and Kave Salakal. Uh, we'll have to see how that one goes. Uh, Runar saying hi from Norway, man. Thanks, Runar, for joining. Uh, how about Joshua King to Spurs? Uh, I've been saying quite a bit uh, about this this deal, this kind of deal. I think if, if we are to sign a player, especially Josh King or someone from Bournemouth or in the EFL, I think it will be one we'll see develop later on in the window if we don't uh, pick up our, our main targets. So say we, we don't get uh, Arcadius Milik or, or Vout Veghorst, then I think after the close of the, the main transfer window on the 5th of October, we could potentially start moving for, for Josh King championship players because as we know, there's an extra 10-day window um, at the end of the main transfer window where Premier League clubs can trade with EFL clubs. So I think we'll see development on that then. Um, I, I wouldn't say he should be kind of a, a, a priority signing for us. I think it's just solely a plan B. Um, he, he's a very good player. He has shown quality in the Premier League, but I think we need to be looking at bigger players than that uh, for now. And look, if we don't get someone, he, he certainly wouldn't be a bad second option. Um, I think in, in terms of strikers in the Championship, given the departures of Callum Wilson and Ali Watkins, I think he is up there among the best, uh, probably with you know Timu Puki at that level as well. Uh, but for now, uh, I, I don't think there'll be much development in that one just yet. Uh, Liquid Snake saying... Instead of getting a poor backup striker, I would prefer using Mora in that position, a risk worth taking if we are not to buy Skriniar, um, if we are able to buy Skriniar. And I think that that's kind of the concern Tottenham, ha- Tottenham fans have, that it will be someone like Lucas Mora used uh, in that position, because you know we, we, we need our options behind the striker, we need options in striker as well, and if there's going to be players kind of falling into those two brackets, as players like Hoyman Son uh, and Lucas Mora have been in recent years, I think then... You know, our squad depth all, all of a sudden looks a lot worse because instead of having you know two options for midfield and two options for striker, we have three among the two the two positions, and all of a sudden you know you're going to see a lot more muscle injuries. You know, as we have in recent years, players have been asked to play a number of different positions and rotation uh, not being uh, as common a thing. I think it will be more important to get to get a striker in. Um, and I suppose following on from the question, if it is going to be an expensive centre back and a cheap striker, or vice versa, it was going to be a case of a very, very good centre back or uh, kind of just good centre back and striker. I would certainly opt for for the both. Um, I think it is important that we do get players in in, in both positions this window. Um, Peter saying it would be nice if we could get a really good centre back that can also play uh, as a right back to to back Doherty when needed. Otherwise, keep Aurier because if we sell him, we'd be back to square one with just Doherty. Uh, which across the whole season with all competitions it'll just be too much for, for any one player and Peter also going on to say no to Lingard to replace Delhi. what's the point he's three years older and way off his best form only really had one good season for Man U uh, and does well in cup toys but to replace Delhi, no and I think uh, a point uh, a lot of fans are making is that that one good period he did have for Manchester United was actually during Jose Mourinho's time at the club which I think does need to be acknowledged but um, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be uh, kind of a, a decisive factor in this deal 
Um, now I see a few of you there talking about Vert Veghorst, and this is one that again has developed in the last couple of days. Um, as you say, probably better than probably better than Josh King. He's six foot six, scored sixteen goals and thirty one appearances for uh, for Wolfsburg in the in the Bundesliga last season. And he's, he's it's a consistent goal scoring record that he does have in the Bundesliga. Uh, I think the the Telegraph in Holland, of course, Veghorst from Holland, they were reporting that. Uh, Tottenham could potentially complete this deal by the end of this week. That was last weekend. I think we see now that wasn't true. Uh, Alistair Gold today saying reports that we're, we're interested in him, reports that we're close to signing him are wide of the mark. So I'm not sure if Oud Vagorst is actually a target for Spurs at the moment. But of course, that can change uh, very, very quickly. Uh, Kieran saying, hey Matt, what do you think of Skriniar and Milik? Um, two fantastic signings. Two potential fantastic signings. Um, you know, Skriniar, when, when we heard those rumours at the start of the summer, uh, or this was more than rumours because it was Fabrizio Romano, we heard that Inter Milan actually offered Spurs Milan Skriniar in their attempts to sign Tongi and Dombele. And at first I was kind of thinking about that and I was thinking, why why have we turned that down? You know, and Dombele is a player who uh, certainly has a lot of potential but has, hasn't shown that at Spurs and he doesn't seem to be, he doesn't seem to want to realise that potential at the club. And Skriniar, a world-class defender and perhaps a position that we do need to strengthen more uh, that we need to keep our midfield intact. And, you know, I thought, like, he's such a good player, I thought we should swap him for Ndombele, but, you know, having given, given it a bit of consideration, I think we did make the right decision, uh, giving Ndombele another chance, there's no point in giving up on him after one year, uh, but that that is how highly I do hold uh, Milan Skriniar, he's a really, really good defender, and as I say, widely regarded as one of the best centre-backs in Italy, um, so for him, I think it would be an absolutely exceptional sign if we could get that over the line, and Arkady Smilic, you know, he, I, I wouldn't put him on that level at all, I wouldn't put him on a similar level to Milan Skriniar, but... I think, uh, as far as second choice strikers go, he's, I'd say, kind of a better version of Fernando Llorente, if that makes sense. You know, he's uh, someone who can come on for the last fifteen, twenty minutes of the game. If we're if we're if we're chasing a goal, he can, you know, be a threat in the air. He can hold up the ball. He can bring others into play. If we're trying to hold on to a lead, he can be the one who I suppose does the same thing. If the ball goes up to him, he can hold it up and wait for these runners to catch up with him and then bring them into play. So he he wouldn't be. You know, I wouldn't say he's someone that we can rotate for Kane, but he's someone who he's someone who can, you know, give Kane a rest every now and then. He wouldn't be uh, competition for Kane by any stretch of the imagination. But having said that, he is still also a very good goal scorer. As you can see, there thirty eight league goals in ninety three appearances for Napoli. He scored thirty two and fifty two for Ajax. Um, he, he's a very very good player. Uh, who scored dot com there saying he's good with long shots, direct free kicks, holding on to the ball, finishing, and link up play. Uh, so certainly could come in very very handy for us and as Carol says he has had two anterior cruciate ligament injuries which which are concerning their uh, injuries that you often see uh, coming back to bite the player uh, which which is concerning but I don't think we can let injury history get in the way of signing a potentially really really good player uh, someone who can can be a fantastic addition to our team um, Crimson saying Bundesliga is similar to Premier League. Uh, we're witnessing Bayern win every year, just like Man United were during ninety five to two thousand and ten. And I, I do think, uh, in terms of quality, the Bundesliga is certainly up there with the Premier League. Um, I think, you know, it's it's controversial to say, but I think quality wise, it is probably better than the Premier League. But you know, it it doesn't compare to the Premier League in terms of entertainment um, and, and stuff like that. Uh, Crimson saying Sanchez is better than Dyer. Uh, I think they they both offer very very different things to the team. Sanchez is more of a pacey defender, whereas Dyer I think is better on the ball, given you know the experience he has had playing in in midfield. Uh, <laughs> Paul saying oh, I'm better than Dyer. Uh, Justin Dyer is Jose Jose's, Jose's golden boy. I fear we are stuck with him. And look, I know we as fans can sit here and criticise Eric Dyer and say he's not good enough to be in our first team. Um, but at the end of the day, I think as much as we can you know, have our own opinions and discuss this amongst ourselves, I do think we have to trust Jose's, Jose's judgment more than anyone else. And if we are going to bring in another centre-back and if Dyer continues to get in, into the first team, you know, I, I, I probably will complain about it if things start to go wrong. I think we'll all complain about it if things start to go wrong. But we have to trust the manager's judgment over our, our own. You know, today is the, the 20th anniversary of his, his managerial career and he has won almost every. I think he has won everything he has actually competed in. So I think we do have to trust his judgment to some extent. But I, I do see what Eric Dyer brings to the team. I do see. I also see why fans don't want to see him in the team and why they don't think he's any good. But um, I think it's it's finding that middle ground is very important and kind of. I know a lot of fans. I, I'm 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 guilty of this quite a bit as well. When when you kind of formulate an opinion on a player, that that's all you, you that's all you want to see when you when you see him play. So that's all that you you, you do see. And I know I've done that in the past with Serge Aurier in terms of you know he could he could have a decent game but he makes one or two mistakes and that's all I'll see. That's all I'll pick at. So I think we do need to take a step back and actually analyse 
rather than him as a player as a whole, analyze him as a player under Jose Mourinho and in the system that we have. And I do think he has improved uh, in, in the past year or so since Mourinho has taken charge. Um, so hopefully he can be, if he's going to continue to be in, in the team, hopefully he can be a good addition and a good member of that team. But of course, we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Um... Crimson saying we need strikers who can score headers. We don't have anybody who is good in the air. And Akadi Smelik, Fad Vakehorst, or apparent current targets certainly fit that bill. Uh, Justin saying I'd rather have the Benfica Brazilian striker Carlos Vinicius than Milik. Um, look, personally, I don't know too much about Carlos Vinicius. So I'm not going to claim that I do. But I think Milik is, is a very good option for us. And he's someone who has proven himself on, on a big stage. So for me, uh, given my... Uh, my lack of knowledge, I suppose, on Vinicius, but from what I do know about him, I, w I would prefer uh, Milik myself. Um, Paul about Dyer saying, I just think he's too slow. I've seen Milk turn quicker. Um, Crimson saying, Jose Mourinho has never won uh, Bundesliga. It's the last trophy left for him. Uh, but in, in terms of the, tro the competitions he, have, he has competed in, um, he, he has definitely won all of those. Uh, Peter making a good point saying, Dyer has passion and loves the club. He needs to be pushed harder to reinvent himself as a centre-back unless we get another centre-back. Uh, unless if we get another centre back, Jose will reallocate him as a midfielder. And in terms of midfielders, I don't know if if Eric Dyer is is good enough to step in there. To be honest, because we have a lot of options in there. You know, it, it's looking likely we might play a four three three this season. And looking then, you have uh, Lacelso, Ali, and Dambele, uh, Suzoko, Hoybier, Winks, and I'm, I'm sure there are a num number of others that I'm just forgetting off the top of my head. But we have a lot of options in there, and I think it'll be more difficult for Dyer to get into the midfield than it will be for him to get in, into the defence. Because you know, we only have three uh, first-team established centre-backs now in Alderweireld, Dyer and Sanchez. And I know, of course, we have uh, Jaffa Tanganga coming through as well. And uh, Carter Vickers still at the club. And even Ben Davis, who can uh, deputise in a left centre-back role uh, in a three at the back. But I think it'll be a lot easier for Dyer to, to make headway getting into the first team. I suppose he's already there, but if and when we do improve, I think he'll, he'll be more... It'll be better for him to make a move into defence rather than midfield. Um, I, I just don't think he has the, the qualities to, to get past the midfield options that we do have and to get himself into that first team. Kieran saying, uh, we'll see what striker will be, but I think it will be Veghorst. Um, I, I, I think it's it's looking le le less likely at the moment, if I can get my words out. Um, Alistair Gold, as I said, saying about Veghorst, uh, the interest there from Tottenham is is not as, as serious as some people are suggesting. And of course, just to remind you as well, with uh, Arcadius Milik, uh, Alistair Gold also reporting our interest in him has cooled. Uh, Carl Kaleha saying the Spurs representatives fly to Milan to discuss Skriniar and Milik. Uh, this, this were reports today um, that Tottenham were going to send some um, some representatives to Italy. I think that is where these uh, talks with with uh, Milan Skriniar have started, but that does appear to be mainly for Skriniar uh, rather than uh, for for Arcadis Milik. And a bit of breaking news here coming in from Fabrizio Romano. And look, I call it breaking news, but it's nothing we didn't already know really. Um, Fabrizio Romano has confirmed Tottenham will sign a new centre-back during this transfer window so a, a bit of confirmation there I suppose as it's as confirmed something can get without hearing it from the club when it does come from Fabrizio Romano and he has confirmed Tottenham will sign a centre-back this transfer window which is very important as I've been saying you know repeatedly over this transfer window but it, it's always nice to get these the kind of constant reassurance that um, that something will happen with these moves of Fabrizio Romano saying Tottenham will sign a centre-back uh, this transfer window and as we say talk about Milan Skriniar uh, Tottenham uh, have open talks with Inter Milan over the potential signing of Milan Skriniar uh, some some reports suggesting we've made a bid of £35 million they're unconfirmed reports uh, but Inter Milan looking for something closer to £55 million as they're quoting €60 million Euro. Uh, they do appear to have targeted uh, their replacement for Milan Skriniar who is uh, Nikola Milenkovic uh, from Fiorentina, so good for, for us, I suppose, that they are already looking at a potential replacement there. Uh, but I think he right now is our number one target for a centre-back. You know, Ruben Diaz, also a name that, uh, being mentioned, uh, Romano saying he is still an option for us, but for now it does look as though the pursuit of Milan Skriniar has taken centre stage, and hopefully we'll see something with that uh, over the next couple of days. And just to, I suppose, revise what Fabrizio Romano did say about this last night, um, this coming about quarter past ten uh, last night, he said Tottenham have open talks for Milan Skriniar as a possible target. He's one of Mourinho's favourite options as as a new centre back. Uh, no more chances for a swap deal uh, involving Ndombele, as I was saying. Price tag is the main issue. Inter have asked for sixty million euro to sell Skriniar, and uh, Romano went on to say uh, more about Tottenham. Arkady Smilic has been offered on the last few hours, 
as a new striker after the deal collapsed with AS Roma. Spurs will decide soon. Bellotti is out of our list of targets. Talks on with Inter to sign Skriniar, but Spurs will not bid 60 million euro. Uh, Ruben Diaz for Benfica is another option. So very succinct there from uh, Romano, not beating around the bush on that one at all. Uh, we are in talks for, for Milan Skriniar. Ruben Diaz is still an option in terms of centre-backs and in terms of strikers. Uh, we had one offered Arkady Smilic. It, it does seem as though today we've actually turned down the chance to sign him. Uh, but, of course, that is coming from Alistair Gold that our interest has cooled, so it'll be interesting to see um, when uh, Fabrizio Romano does weigh in on that certain deal, on that specific deal again. Uh, but he's saying as well that uh, Andrea Velotti is, is out of the question. Uh, we, we seem to be looking for a very different deal to Torino, and you know before a transfer fee even came into the, the negotiations, came into the discussions, it seems as though the, the, the format of that deal is what uh, ended negotiations there between Torino and Tottenham over him. Um, Peter saying it's true, midfield is getting pretty crowded. Um, Kieran saying Joe Hart is great, to be honest, he'll be great at Spurs. Paul saying Hart is good for the dressing room, in my opinion, uh, has to be a good thing to have experienced win winners around the squad. Uh, Tom saying he's good at keeping the players' hair dandruff free. Uh, Carl saying so it's either Skriniar or Ruben Diaz, and at the moment it seems like that, but of course, you know, someone another target could crop up, or both of these could fall through, and we could end up going for. Um, a backup if, if that is you know Kim and Jay if he is a kind of a plan B if we don't get our main transfer targets uh, Michael saying Skriniar or Diaz and Kim and Jay in Dyer Carter Vickers and or Foyt out uh, your hopes for the transfer window Mark was saying as a Joe House replacement you could look at Ivan from Ponte Preta he is seen as an ex-Ederson I know absolutely nothing about him but I will take a look at him um, uh, if there is, especially if there is some development in that and thank you David from Scotland for subscribing I do appreciate it and again, look, anyone who is new here, uh, if you do want to uh, get more of these more of these videos, as you can see, I'm hoping to get to uh, 3,000 subscribers before the end of the transfer window. We look set to smash that at the moment, uh, only 78 subscribers away. Um, please go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button down below and click the notification bell as well so you get notified whenever I upload or go live. Um, Crimson saying, sorry, but striker should be our top priority. We cannot depend on Gareth Bale and Son to score when Harry's injured. We have seen Son getting injured, and we all know the story of Bale's injury. Um, which, uh, look, I, I do agree to some extent we do need players who can score goals but as I was saying, I think we need we need to improve our starting eleven before we start looking at squad depth in other positions and I think the centre-back role in, in our first eleven is something that can be improved um, which is why I do why I do think we do need to prioritise centre-back over striker but I entirely get what you're saying and I understand your argument that we, we can't depend we know Harry Kane gets injured we know Gareth Bale gets injured and we can't depend on Son. He got injured last season. I know it's, it's not exactly an injury that could be a recurring thing uh, when he did fracture his arm against Aston Villa. But um, I do think, personally, I do think uh, centre back is is a is a more more important thing to get done this summer. And just uh, to get your opinions there in the chat, um, if everyone could pop in, would you prefer us to sign a centre back or a striker this window? If you had to choose one, uh, which do you think is is more important for that one? Um, Peter saying just noticed uh, only 79 subscribers to reach the magic number of 3,000 as as you say just down to 78 now um, ho hopefully we can get there you know it's the goal and as I was saying in my community tab a while ago um, if we can get to 3,000 uh, I'll be up on that goal and hoping for, for a massive one we'll, we'll look for a massive one before before the end of the transfer window Kyle Kaleha saying Fabrizio Romano on his podcast said that Jose Mourinho thinks Skriniar is the best centre-back in the world he likes him a lot so look if that's the if that's the type of player we, we could be looking at, if it's what Mourinho sees as the best centre back in the world, I think you know it says a lot about what um, what Daniel Levy uh, is looking at in terms of Mourinho's transfer targets and who he actually wants to bring into the club. Um, it, it it could be huge for us that uh, Mourinho is starting to get these these big deals out of um, out of Daniel Levy. Uh, Kieran saying where's Skriniar from? I thought he was Italian. He's as Kyle says he's from Slovakia. Uh, Liquid Snakes saying the breaking news graphic is top notch. I appreciate that. Um, now Mr. Bowl saying centre back Jacob Hall centre back Tom Dock centre back Kieran saying I would sign a centre back but we need both uh, Gixer are saying definitely a, a centre back George saying uh, striker is vital but centre back centre back will improve the starting 11 uh, Paul as well saying centre back for, for me we look slow at the back um, LH08 game saying what is your lineup versus Shkendia um, I look to be honest I haven't thought too much about this when I was focusing on this, this live stream tonight but again look I think we'll see uh, a bit of rotation, but if Mourinho was going to go all out with the strong squad against uh, Lokomotiv Plovdiv last week, and of course we just about scraped over the line in that one, I think we will see a similar starting eleven here. Uh, we know Sergio Regalon hasn't been uh, registered in time, so we won't see him feature at all. Of course, Gareth Bale injured, and I would assume not registered on time either. Uh, he said Deli Ali will feature, so 
there, of course, there, you can put together a, a bit of an estimate there on, on what we will see. But for me, I think rotation was still a strong team. Uh, Paul saying centre-back for me, we look slow at the back. Justin saying, will Bale play as a cam and keep Delhi out of the team or as a winger to challenge more and Sonny? Um, I think it'll be a bit of both. I think we're going to see a lot of um, a lot of change, a lot of versatility in our system this season. You know, we can play uh, a four-three-three. We can, of course, play the four-two-three-one that we usually play. We can also play a three-five-two or a five-three-two, whatever way you want to look at it. I think Bale will play in a lot of different positions and he will challenge a lot of different players. Um, but I, I don't think we can sit here and say for sure, for sure which uh, position he will be playing in because there will be a lot of uh, changing around in that. Uh, Michael saying we need both in terms of striker and centre back. Matt, when do you see players leaving the club? And look, it's it's weird that they haven't left yet. Um, I think we heard very early on in the window that it would have to be a case of letting players go before we managed to bring players in. But here we are, and you know we haven't lost a first team player yet. You know, obviously Jan Vertonghen left at the end of last season for free. Uh, we offloaded Kyle Walker Peters as well, but we haven't seen a first team player leave. And we've already brought in you know five signings and a one as a free with Joe Hart and Bale only on loan. But we've spent quite a quite a decent amount of money. In, in comparison to what we were told would be available at the start of the window but you know there's only two weeks left in the window I think it's we will start to see deals uh, advancing now as I was saying Juan Foyt potentially on the way to Fulham uh, Paolo Gazaniga I think he'll be questioning his future right now I think he'll be seeing himself as good enough to be a first team Premier League keeper and I would certainly agree with him so I think we may see some development on that of course Aurier the talk has been there since the start of the window and Danny Rose I'm, I'm surprised he is still at the club so I think it'll be very very soon we'll start to see players moving on uh, Peter saying definitely a centre back because Bale, Moore, etc. can fill centre centre forward or striker position if needed. And we all saw Sonny against Southampton perfection. Um, Alexander Hilton, welcome along to the stream. Crimson saying this season Daniel Levy is different. Carl saying um, we should sign a top quality centre back first and then go for uh, a cheap striker. Uh, Sacred Raid saying Eric Dyer out. Uh, George saying we don't seem to have leadership at centre back anymore. And I think that's that's kind of come naturally with the departure of, of Jan Vertonghen. Uh, Sir, or Toby Oliveira will probably a player who can step up into that role but for now of course that hasn't happened um, uh, LH Awake Games saying Gareth Bale on bench or I know he may be out in mid-October uh, that's what we heard I suppose before we even signed him but um, Jose Marino saying he feels as though he could be back early and I think you know, the, the initial news we got was he will be out until after the international break and our game before that is uh, is Manchester United on the 4th of October uh, that game moved today for, for television rights we're kicking off at 4.30 on the 4th of October that one's going to be on Sky Sports so uh, I would think and I would hope uh, to, to some extent that Gareth Bale will be targeting that game uh, for his return Jacob saying as long as Kane and Son is not injured they will bang in goals as usual but we need to upgrade the back line ASAP both is the best option but if I have to choose I'd say centre back and I, I fully agree with you on that one Alexander Hilton saying, I would like Pats and Daka and Skriniar. And as for Pats and Daka, um, that one won't be happening this summer. Uh, you know, we were talking a lot about him a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was one I was very hopeful and very optimistic about. And a player I would love to have seen join the club. But he has chosen to stay at Red Bull Salzburg for at least another season. So we won't see um, any development on him. He, he won't be leaving Salzburg this summer. Um, uh, Antonio saying, as soon as I heard that PSG uh, were interested in Skriniar and Milik having a medical at Roma, I quickly lost hope right away. But what I learned is that the transfer window is always unpredictable, and it, it is unpredictable. And I haven't heard anything about Milan Skriniar uh, and his his uh, medical at PSG. Uh, they're certainly not coming from uh, any of the sources that I do look at. Uh, Italian journalist Nicola Shearer reports PSG and Tottenham set to bid for Inter's 60 million euro rated Milan Skriniar. Um, so this is coming in a bit before our interest. Uh, a few reports that PSG do want Milan Skriniar, uh, but. Look, at the moment, I'd be confident that uh, we would probably be the favourites for him. Um, as I was saying, coming from Fabrizio Romano, that we are in talks to sign him. But also, as I was saying, with regards to uh, Inter Milan's offer for Tongi Ndombele early in the summer, they offered Milan Skriniar. And I think that, that indicates it is a move the player will be open to because they wouldn't have made that offer if they hadn't first uh, crossed it by the player. Uh, Alan Harry is saying, I prefer a centre-back. We'll score goals, so we need uh, clean sheets to win games. Uh, Jacob saying what are your thoughts of the Lingard rumour and I think my thoughts are uh, uh, thanks very much Paul for dropping the stream we'll see you soon um, I think my thoughts with Lingard are very similar to to most fans you know it's I'm, I'm just hoping it's not true I'm hoping it's a joke uh, I don't think it is going to happen I think we've been very um, we've been getting a kind of reassurance today from Jose Mourinho that Deli Ali will not be leaving he said he's convinced that uh, that Ali could be uh, will be staying at the club beyond this transfer window so I, I don't think that's something we, we will have to uh, suffer through uh, for the remaining of the window. I think it's just, you know, the stories about Deli Ali at the moment seem to be selling, seem to be selling clicks and selling papers for the for the journalists. 
And I saw a good tweet a while ago saying that, you know, Toby Oliveira didn't travel to Bulgaria and he didn't play against Southampton. So he's in the exact same position as Deli Ali. So why is Ali the one that's being, uh, that's all in the paper, you know, that he, he could potentially be leaving? And I think it was it was very clever from Spurs today uh, tweeting out, you know, as they always do some pictures from training. And one of the tweets they did put out was, uh, was Deli Ali looking very, very happy in training this morning. Um, if I can just uh, find those photos very quickly. There's also some Tanki and Dambele as well, uh, looking quite looking quite happy with life in, in training this morning. And here we have Deli Ali, you know, certainly an unmistakable spoil there. Uh, certainly enjoying his time at training this morning. So I, I'm a lot more confident at the moment that we will be holding on to Deli Ali than I was in, in recent days. Um, Toxic St. Bale for the Man U game. Carl saying Skriniar looks very intimidating to play against. Um... Uh, Gigs are saying, come on everyone, hit that like button for Matt, I appreciate that. Look, as he says, smash that like button down below, you know, it helps me get this stream out to, to more and more people. Um, and I'm hoping to build this community of Tottenham fans here so we can have more of these discussions, get more people in here, more opinions, and we can, you know, really get to know uh, kind of what the, the general fan base wants with regards to Tottenham transfers and stuff. And as well, if you haven't already subscribed, if you want more of these transfer live streams, uh, transfer breaking news videos, analysis videos and all that, uh, make sure to smash that subscribe button down below and see if we can get to uh, to 3,000 before the end of this transfer window. At the moment, we're sitting on 2,922. Um, so so please go ahead and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, Peter saying, Bale may be given the freedom to float behind Kane, feeding off La Celso or Ndombele with Bale either uh, slipping it through to Kane or smashing it in himself from 25 to 30 yards. We know he has the capability to do both. Um, so hopefully we will see the best of Gareth Bale this season. And, and hopefully we will see uh, some good partnerships there forming, as you say, uh, you know, being fed from the midfield behind him and linking up with Kane and, of course, Son as well. Um, Jacob saying I had to check the calendar to make sure it wasn't the 1st of April when I saw that Lingard rumour. I think we we were all uh, in a fairly similar position. Crimson saying Bale will not get injured in Premier League because Premier League is not as rough as La Liga. Uh, Nightshade saying Dyer difficult to know where to play him. You know, he, I suppose in one way it is good that he can play in different positions, but in another way it could be giving us a bit of a selection headache. You know where do we play him? Is he a number one option in either position? Is he a good backup option in either as well? Um, there's certainly a lot of questions to be asked, but I think right now, for me anyway personally, centre back is the best position for him. But if we do bring in someone like Milan Skriniar and Ruben Diaz, all of a sudden he's not a first team player, and you know then even more questions will start to be asked. Uh, Michael saying, what is our best centre back pairing right now? I think Sanchez is our best one, uh, is our best with one of Toby Tanganga, Dyer, or Foyth. Um, Look, personally, I, I would have to disagree with you in that. I would say Toby Oliveira is our best centre back, but it's you know it's one thing to sit here and say you know who our best centre back pairing is, but if you pick you know uh, Toby Oliveira and, and, and Davinson Sanchez, all of a sudden if you're going out and you're playing a team like Burnley, who are going to put uh, ten men behind the ball, is Davinson Sanchez really required in a game like this? In a game like this, is he you know does he offer much to our team? Because I think. Dyer is, is a better ball playing centre back. Having that experience in midfield, I think he is better on the ball. And if we're looking to control a game and if we're looking for, you know, a defence who can keep things ticking over as we put pressure on these smaller teams, I think then um Eric Dyer is a better option. But if we're playing against Manchester City who have a very pacey front three or similar similarly with Manchester United, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal, uh, even Wolves as well with, with Adama Traore, I do think Davinson Sanchez then is a better option because he's a lot faster than um than Eric Dyer and probably defensively is a bit better as well. He's made some ridiculous tackles already during his time at Tottenham. So I think, you know, it is... Obviously, we can have that discussion who was our best centre-back. For me, it is Toby Alderweireld. But in terms of our best pairing, it, it always depends on who we're playing. Uh, Tom saying, uh, please, Matt, keep up with the transfer videos. You're my go-to guy now. I appreciate that. Um, Kieran Jones saying, uh, hey, Matt, yourself, Ben and Sim are my go-to for all in any Spurs news. Uh, thanks, man. Been a Spurs fan since 78, Ozzy and Ricky days. Thank you very much for that, Kieran. I appreciate it. Uh, Brillingston saying, I'm from Bahrain. Uh, Figgy Dowdy saying, top man, Matt. Again, appreciate it. Uh, Romario saying, during the Bale interview, he said Jose spoke to him about a few positions. I wonder where he will play for Spurs. Does he still have the legs to play on the wing? My preference would be a cam. And uh, yeah, uh, he, he was talking about that in, he, in his interview with, with Peter Crouch for BT Sport. And he was saying he's not he's not the player who's going to be making those 90-yard runs up the wing every second, but he does still have his pace. So he, he can still play on the wing, but not for... He's not going to be, you know, affecting every second of every game. He's going to have to pick his moments. You know, at 31 years of age now, naturally his his uh, athletic abilities are declining. Uh, but he, he he can still offer us a lot on the wing. But of course, playing centrally as well is something he did a bit for Real Madrid. Um, he can offer you know various things in various roles. 
Uh, Mark was saying Skriniar is excellent but expensive. Don't think Spurs will play anywhere will pay anywhere near that amount. Uh, Lucas Verissimo from Santos from Santos, if possible, Lucas Moore was help him settle into London and Spurs. Uh, Tom saying yeah, Kieran Matt Ben and Sim Matt Ben Sim and Alistair Gold. Uh, Crimson saying Matt is more reliable than Fabrizio Romano. Um, I certainly wouldn't go I certainly wouldn't go that far. Um, but I do, I do appreciate those comments. Liquid Snake saying Bale plays twenty five Premier League games with eighty percent the ability he had seven years back and top four is assured he can lift the, the quality of players around him. Uh, Peter saying a lot of journalists are predatory people who recognise vulnerabilities in particular people and thus uh, and this is what's happening with uh, reports of Deli Ali. It's ridiculous forcing the news instead of just reporting on it. And yeah, as I was saying, you know, Ali say in, in, in the last week especially are in very is in a very similar position as Toby Oliveiral, neither travelled to Bulgaria and neither featured against um neither featured against uh, Southampton at the weekend and I know it's different with Toby on the bench but it's the, the news there is about Delhi Alley and there's nothing about Toby Oliveiral and it's just because they know that's what people will read that's what people will look at uh, so I certainly agree with you on that one uh, Sufia saying are we interested in Jovic um, I, I'm not sure to be honest I haven't seen any uh, reports of that I know perhaps we were looking at him last summer but at the moment he doesn't seem to be on our radar uh, Justin said Dyer needs long passing training into a bucket in fact the whole team uh, need long passing training except for Toby uh, have a word with Jose please um, yeah Passing Toby Oliveira, those long diagonals he plays, those brilliant balls over the top that have been effective in the past with his link up at Deli Alley, who, you know, really, really thrived in that number 10 role, making those late runs in behind. I think Oliveira, exceptional passing, but something that is certainly lacking in, in a lot of other players. Uh, LHO8 saying, uh, we should have picked up Jovic while shopping in Madrid. Uh, Michael saying, great stream, Matt. Enjoyed seeing you on, uh, on with Ben and Sim a while back. Thank you for that, Michael. Uh, Crimson saying Southampton game was Bale's impact on our team and look we've been talking about how we can get the best out of other players but when he's on the pitch and when he's not because there's a lot more competition now there for places up there and Kane and Son they were probably our first two options even with Bale coming into the squad I think certainly making a, a statement there that they're not going to let their places in that first team go easily um, Peter saying remember when Dyer was taken off after 30 minutes of course against um Olympiacos in Mourinho's second game in charge it's a, it's a, it was a sub that did change that game with Christian Eriksen coming on and of course we went on to, to win 4-2 we were 2-0 down at the time uh, you know it's something similar that happened with Deli Ali uh, in the first game of the season against Everton which I think is kind of what started what triggered these stories about him um, Kieran saying on another note uh, imagine the boys wanting to prove themselves to Bale never mind the gaffer Gareth will bring out another 20% in everyone even Jose to be fair and agree on that uh, massive high profile signing in, in Gareth Bale is no doubt about that and what the things he's going to get out of our team I can't even imagine how good we're going to become with him uh, Tom Block saying I love that Spurs YouTube channels all help each other out with guest spots and it, it's great you know we can we can bring in different discussions to different communities because I know look we are Totten TV undoubtedly have a much much bigger community than me uh, but even then coming in here I'm sure there's a few people you know, one or two around the place who haven't seen them yet and I think it, it's good to bring in these fresh opinions to these different communities and you know it's good to, to merge our communities at times as well and, and have uh, different people on discussing things um, you know I've had We Are Tottenham TV I was on Charlie THFC's channel uh, recently and as well I, I do want to just drop out a little teaser I have um, hopefully a, a massive massive collab coming on this channel next week um, it's, it's someone I don't want to drop the name just yet but it's someone who's over a million subscribers uh, on YouTube across a couple of channels um, so if you do want that make sure to smash that subscribe button um, as I said I don't want to drop the name just yet um, it's it, it should be happening um, it's very close I, I'm just trying to get in contact to, to make sure we have this all, all scheduled but uh, potentially a massive collab coming on this channel in, in the next week or so um, uh, Bradley saying do you think we can get Skriniar I, I think we can but it's it's not I, w I wouldn't say it's likely or I wouldn't sit here and say I think it is going to happen but I think it is definitely a possibility uh, Jonathan saying Matt knows his stats uh, thank you for that uh, Crimson saying there are 100, 100 plus people watching and just 50 likes we need more likes guys and he's right Crimson is right only 50 likes with 100 of you there um, I think we need a few more of you to smash that like button down below uh, Carol saying Matt what do you think our chances are signing Skriniar um, uh, look as I was saying I, I, I don't think it's going to happen I'm, I'm, I I no, I, it, it is of course possible and I hope it does happen but if, if I had to give a percentage of how likely it is it, it wouldn't be anywhere above 50 you know, I think it is It is more likely that there would be a discrepancy there in, in the, the fees that both clubs want to both uh, pay and receive but it is possible and look up until last week I didn't think we'd ever see Bale back at Tottenham um, so anything is possible in this transfer window uh, Peter saying some people uh, players just make uh, others around them want to make themselves better players and work harder and stuff and Bale is certainly a player like that 
Uh, Jonathan saying, Matt, how do you feel about the Jesse Lingard situation? Um, I'm I'm a lot more relaxed now that I I don't think <laughs> that I don't think it's going to happen. I was very worried about it very early on. Um, I think when the rumor mill about Deli Ali first started, and then when Fabrizio Romano waited in it, uh, saying there was potential there for uh, Lingard to replace Ali at Tottenham, I was very concerned. I, I'm not, I'm not going to hide that. Um, but right now, I, I think it's unlikely that this will happen. So I'm a bit more relaxed about it, and I I don't think we'll see um, Lingard in a Spurs jersey anytime soon. Um, so look, uh, that is all we have time for today. Um, it, it's been a great one. We're up at 2,928 subscribers now. And the traffic at the top there, not quite upgrading or updating. We have Abby Abby. Thank you very much for subscribing there. Um, look, again, anyone here who, uh, Peter, that is saying, uh, surely the only thing to happen for this channel is for it to explode upwards. It's one of the best football, especially Spurs content providers on YouTube. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that one. I do appreciate that. Um, just taking a few final comments here. Kieran Jones saying, I'll probably get shouted down, Matt, but I always thought how good John Stones would be in a Spurs shirt. Uh, I think, look, he could offer something. He's, uh, you know, obviously not been as good at Man City as he was at Everton, but when you're in a team of that quality, I think you're always going to look worse than you are. So I think Stones could be a good addition, but I would kind of prioritise players like Skriniar and Ruben Diaz first. Aaron Jose, thank you very much for subscribing. Uh, Michael saying, which is more likely getting over the line, Skriniar or Milik? Can we get both? I'd say Skriniar at the moment more likely and... Uh, getting both is a possibility but I wouldn't I don't think it is going to happen Martin Hawkins saying 54th like given thank you for that Martin um, Jonathan saying you think Tottenham can compete for the Premier League this season personally I reckon we can um, I don't think we'll see uh, a league uh, challenge uh, a league title challenge this season uh, DJ Sean saying as a proud Lily White I have to say we are spoiled because we have Matt, Ben, Sim, Slav and Chris Cowlin awesome love the content thank you very much Justin saying if Spurs are broke where is the £40 million for a screen and the money for a striker coming from who is being sold to fund it that's the question I have as well. I'm hoping there is sort of a sponsor, uh, a sponsorship deal there, there with the stadium or something like that. Uh, Footballista saying, I think we need a centre-back. And thank you for subscribing there. Uh, saying, I think we need a centre-back first and we can buy a striker because if Kane was injured, Morris on Delhi can play as a striker. And I agree with you on that one. Uh, Crimson, Justin and Giggs are all saying, come on you Spurs. And look, as I said, if you haven't yet subscribed, please go down and smash that subscribe button uh, for a lot more transfer live streams, transfer videos, uh, general Tottenham analysis videos. Um, and as I said, a massive, massive collab coming on this channel next week, uh, if all goes to plan. Uh, smash that subscribe button if you have enjoyed this stream, if you are happy with how Tottenham's transfer window is going so far. Um, come join us as a community, let's get in this chat, let's talk about Tottenham uh, as much as we can, and as 